Hey y'all, Ramdino here, coming at you from North Carolina. Well, it's been a great year for backpacking. I think I got enough time to get one more in before it gets to be really cold weather and we start having to do some cold weather backpacking. So I'm going to take another section hike on the Appalachian Trail. To find out where I'm going, stick around. Well, you may recall the first section hike of the year. I started out at Rock Gap and went to the Knock, otherwise known as the Nantahala Outdoor Center. And then my second trip was from the southern terminus at Springer Mountain. And that went to Mountains Crossings over Blood Mountain. So my last trip I took was from Mountains Crossings to Dick Street Gap. So to connect the two, or to connect all of them together and get me through Georgia, and well into North Carolina, this coming weekend I'm going to do Dix Creek Gap to Rock Gap. And that'll have me completed all the way from the southern terminus at Springer Mountain all the way to the Nantahala Outdoor Center. So, I'll be taking you along with, that trip, with me on that trip. And we'll talk about some planning here and what I'm looking at as far as temperatures, what I'm going to take with me. So let's get to it. All right, so our trip will be from Dix Creek to Rock Gap. Rock Gap was the first trip where we started uh, of the year and went to the Knock, and so this will be connecting our trips in Georgia that we've done so so far, and that will bring us all the way from the southern terminus at Springer Mountain all the way to the Knock. So looking forward to uh, completing all of Georgia and getting uh, these two connected and having that long distance uh, put together. Uh, we are going to encounter some fairly significant terrain, a lot of ups and a lot of downs. Um, so uh, we're going to start out right at the very beginning, uh, and really the first two-thirds of our trip is all going to be an up. Uh, so this is the entire length of our trip, and uh, I always kind of like to turn, them in lands turn it in landscape mode because uh, it doesn't look near as difficult when you do that. We're not really going to have uh, any kind of bulge or anything like that, so I'm not expecting a lot of uh, great views. Um, some of the places, uh, particularly this time of year, some of the places you can see in the winter, you've got a great view because you don't have leaves on the trees. But in this case, uh, we're still greened out, and so I don't expect there to be a lot of great uh, views for us to see. Uh, right off the bat, uh, this is where our first stop, our overnight, is uh, Bly Gap which is just across the uh, Georgia state line in the North Carolina. And you can see getting up in the uh, next morning on Saturday morning, how that's going to be quite a ride or uh, quite a hike uphill there at Sharp Top. So that's going to be like uh, being on a Stairmaster with every other step. So we'll see how that works. For my weather planning, I use the Appalachian Trail weather app. Uh, that was uh, put together by Shutter, who was a northbounder through hiker in 2011. And uh, it's a fairly accurate, uh, I found it to be. Um, so it's telling me that for uh, Friday uh, night, we're going to have a low of 50. With, there is an 80% chance of rain. Uh, but with those kind of um, high temperatures, I'm not too much worried about getting cold. Uh, during the day, it'll be a high of 60. Uh, and it'll probably rain until about 2 o'clock. Uh, and then Saturday night, we'll have a low of around 39 with a possible chance of rain. Um, but uh, 39, still doable, should be okay with the uh, equipment I got. And then Sunday is supposed to be uh, night, supposed to be a low of 35. So uh, that rain on Friday night is only supposed to be about uh, a tenth of an inch so that's not a lot of rain we shouldn't see the trail flooded or have any problems if we as long as we pitch our tent properly i am taking my full tent so that i will have the bathtub in it instead of just the flash fly, fast fly this time um so we should be good to go with that so here is my loadout for the trip um i'm, I'm gonna be packing a little heavier than usual uh because i've looked at the weather as we just saw, and it's going to be getting a little chilly for part of the trip. So I probably missed it by a week or two, avoiding taking some of the, um, some of, not necessarily winter clothing, but fall clothing uh, 
it's supposed to get down to 34 one night so uh and i'm still testing out my uh, sleeping bag uh after i've washed it so i don't know how well that's going to do um so anyway uh, of course i'm taking my uh atmos uh, 58 that'll be my pack uh i have a have an extra uh, z packs pouch on it uh rain fly with that uh this is my newly laundered um, bag here, uh, Aegis Max, and uh, we'll see how the extra um, loft does to it. Uh, I'm go since we're going to get down pretty uh, cold one night, around 34, the bag itself says it's rated to 35. We've already discussed in the previous video uh, that it's not, uh, and I have been cold in it even in the 40s. Uh, so I'm taking the liner and uh just in case uh i'm gonna go ahead and take this is actually supposed to be a summer bag but it's rated to 40 so i'll have another layer if i need to get in that uh and then um also part of my sleep system is of course my puffy and long john so I, just in case i want to be prepared because i do not sleep well on the trail to begin with and i surely don't sleep well on the trail cold uh Pilla, Sea to Summit Pilla. Uh, there's my pad. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take my full tent. That I'm also expecting rain. So instead of taking just the fast fly system, I'm also going to take the uh, tent because it has a bathtub in it. Uh, and it's supposed to be a little bit windy. Um, so that'll help keep out the wind. Uh, with the fast fly system, the wind can get up underneath it, uh, underneath the fast fly. So I'm going to go ahead and take that. Um, uh, of course, buff, never go anywhere without the buff, uh, snot rag, uh, long john bottoms, um, long john tops, be taking my mommy made, uh, wool, uh, wool toboggan there. I am expecting rain, so I'll be taking my rain bottoms here and my, um, top, uh, then along, uh, of course, Puffy. I don't go on any trips without the Puffy. Food bag coming in right at, uh, with w food and water, coming in right at 10 pounds. Uh, as you know, uh, we discussed before. Freezer bag cooking. Uh, camp shoes. TP trial. Med kit. Knee brace. I needed that last time. It's going to be interesting to see how I do this time. <clears throat> Most of my trip is going to be uphill. Obviously, there's always downhills, but most of it's going to be uphill, particularly the first two days. Uh, and the last day may be downhill. So, cook kit, spork, uh, extra bags for trash and for cooking, water, Sawyer Squeeze filtering kit, Lextronics bag, which basically is nothing more than just the battery to charge my phone, headlamp, tracking poles, tripod for my camera and that's pretty much it that i'm taking there uh and then of course what i'm wearing uh it's hunting season up there so i'll be wearing uh a, a neon colored shirt zip offs my solomon shoes this, this will be the second trip for them so it'll be interesting to see how they do liner socks darn tough socks and then uh additional that is all i'm carrying for additional stuff in case i get wet uh, so that's pretty much it for the loadout uh, i'm probably going to incur an extra four pounds uh, of weight that i don't normally carry because i'm carrying uh, this additional sleeping bag it weighs about a little less than two pounds and i'm carrying the tent so it weighs uh, a little less than two pounds so i'm going to incur those weight penalties but I don't want to be cold, and um, and that's that's a big thing for me. I hate being cold. So anyway, this is uh, what I would consider kind of a late fall loadout. It wouldn't be a complete winter. Uh, this may very well be the last trip with this bag, but we'll talk about the bag more on the trip and include that in our upcoming bag review uh, on the Aegis Max, our second and final review on that. Okay, dope. So that's what I'm toting. Okay, so I'm packed up, ready to go. Just a few minutes from getting out of here. There's my 
kit packed up. Uh, it comes in at 31 pounds, so I am uh, packing heavy. That's about six more pounds uh, than I normally carry. Um, I don't know how I could possibly get that down to my target weight of 20 pounds, um, and even in the summer, but I am carrying about six more pounds, which represents probably about 25% more than I normally carry. So that's a big percentage. Six pounds doesn't sound a lot, but it is. Uh, I'm not a gram winnie by any amount, but that's still short of the 35 pounds that I was carrying the first trip I took out this year. So uh, in any case, uh, I kind of know where a lot of that is, uh, where I can cut that out, uh, you know, particularly for the summer, during the winter, not so much until I start purchasing better equipment. That's it. That is my preparations for this trip. Tune in soon to see the results of the trip and uh, how it went. Uh, if you got anything out of this, give me a thumbs up. Hit that big old red subscribe button or hit my face at the end of this video. And as always, appreciate you and we'll see you out there.